Hello, welcome to the George C. Turtle Center. My name is Garrett. I'm an AmeriCorps member here serving alongside the education team. The Sea Turtle Center is a wildlife hospital focusing on sea turtles, and we are located on Jekyll Island, Georgia. And today I want to talk about some of the cases we see more commonly during the winter months when it's a bit colder out. Uh, we like to call these cases cold stun patients, uh, but to be able to understand what a cold stun patient is, we first need to take a step back and look at how animals maintain their body temperature. There are two main ways that animals will do this. It's either warm-blooded or cold-blooded. These are also known as endothermic or ectothermic. Endothermic being the warm-blooded animals like mammals and birds will usually rely on internal systems to maintain their body temperature, not rely on external environmental cues. Cold-blooded animals, ectothermic animals like reptiles, will rely on their environment for their body temperature maintenance. Street turtles are a type of reptile, so they are in need of good surrounding temperatures. So if they ever find themselves in cold water, it may have adverse effects on their health. So right now I'm standing at a nice comfortable temperature here on the Georgia coast. I'm not really maintaining my temperature as a warm-blooded creature or anything beyond normal. But we're going to take a step into a different environment soon to show what it is to have a sudden shift in temperature that I have to suddenly adapt to, how warm-blooded animals do it, and we'll be able to contrast that with how sea turtles adapt to their cold environments. So now we step into the freezer here at the center where we like to keep all of our turtle food nice and fresh. And as you can imagine, it's much colder than when we were just standing outside. Um, and as a response to the cold, because I am warm-blooded, my body is going to start doing things to counteract that coldness. One video may, may do is I might start shivering if I'm in here long enough. Another thing that I've already found myself doing is I'm pulling my limbs a bit tighter together to keep that warmth in. And I also rub my extremities to keep the blood flow. Also, as a warm-blooded creature, I can rely on extra layers for protection. Warm-blooded animals typically have an extra layer of fur, fat, or feathers to keep them warm. For me, I have this nice jacket. And when all else fails, I can simply leave this environment and hopefully find a more warm one. And that's typically what sea turtles have to do because they do not have the uh, adaptations that warm-blooded animals to do. Uh, but what happens when a sea turtle cannot move to a better environment and ends up in the pool for too long? When this happens, a sea turtle will become cold stunned and its body will start shutting down. Important internal processes will stop functioning and it will lose the ability to swim. During this time, it is more vulnerable to injury and disease and will oftentimes float to the ocean surface. In the United States, every species of sea turtle is endangered, so conservation efforts are focused on saving as many sea turtles as possible. Unfortunately, due to the scale of these cold stunning events, local rescue facilities are often overwhelmed by the number of incoming patients. Thanks to the efforts of volunteer pilot groups like Turtles Fly 2, sea turtle patients are able to be transported long distances to receive the care they need. Every winter, the Georgia Sea Turtle Center receives a number of cold stun patients flown all the way from New England. They arrive on our own Jekyll Island Airport and are then transported to our rescue facility. When the turtles first arrive at the center, their blood is drawn and they are administered fluids. They are then placed in shallow water that matches their body temperature, where their breathing is monitored closely. Cold sun patients often suffer from secondary conditions as well. These include things such as physical injuries and other diseases. For instance, the cold sun patients currently at the center are all suffering from pneumonia. Treating a cold stun sea turtle involves warming up its core temperature gradually. This is done by increasing the temperature of the tank water by 5 degrees until it reaches 75 degrees Fahrenheit, the ideal internal temperature for a sea turtle. The turtle's vitals are monitored throughout this process, and secondary conditions are treated as well. Because of the high number of pneumonia patients this year, the Georgia Sea Turtle Center is utilizing nebulization to provide treatment. 
Nebulization is the process of administering medication via the air the turtles inhale using a special breathing apparatus. Once the turtles are given a clean bill of health, it is a time to release them back to their natural habitat. We are actually able to release sea turtles right here on Jekyll Island because we lie within the normal home range. It is important to remember that cold stunning is not limited to northern waters. It can happen anywhere in the world. So if you are ever on the coast and come across a stranded sea turtle, it is important to contact the proper authorities. Here in Georgia, you can call 1-800-2-SAVE-ME to contact the Department of Natural Resources, who are able to rescue sea turtles in need of help. But even if you don't live by the ocean, you're already doing sea turtles a big service by learning a bit more about them. Thanks for watching.